Hi, this is Violet Castro, V. Castro, and I'm going to talk about Mestiza blood. The mythology, where did it come from, what inspired me? Um, I'm Mexican-American, I grew up in South Texas, and Texas is rife with urban legends, uh, my culture, there are so many folk tales that I remember hearing as a child. It's just kind of been a bit of alchemy. I'm thinking about all of those stories, all of those images, and also personal experiences as a woman and a young girl growing up. And I just thought that I would breathe new life into those stories that I grew up hearing breathe new life into tales that were incomplete in some ways. So I just weaved in my own personal experiences, uh, my emotions. It's just been a lifetime in the making. So it's a collection of short stories and they each have a little bit of me in there and then a lot of fantasy, a lot of horror, urban legend, folklore, a little humor, <laughs> um, but each tale is unique. Each tale is a little snapshot of some place in the world. And that's just how I approached it. And, you know, I hope that you enjoy it. And can, we'll pick up uh, the Queen of the Cicadas on the back of it if you like it. <laughs>
they want to obliterate anyone that is different from them. And I thought, you know, you have this woman who is half human, half bat. She still um, feels love, she still feels pain, she feels all of these things, yet she's a target, yet she is being used, yet she is having to fight just to survive. Whereas these others, it's as if she doesn't matter at all. And again, it's a matter of identity and feeling like no matter what you do or how you look or whatever's going on around in the world, there are people that are gonna think that you don't belong, that you're less than, that you are there to be used. And it's all about survival because they're pitted in this dystopian environment and everybody wants to survive. Everybody wants to be on top. And she just kind of wants to be happy. She just wants to live. And um, that was kind of the point of that story is just, you know, being different and wanting to just be who you are, yet being put in a position to fight for your survival. As far as La Lechusa, I have two stories with La Lechusa, which is the, the owl and the, the, the owl body and the witch's head. I wanted the two different versions of La Lechusa because I feel like our nightmares, our fears, um, those, those things that come after us, they're different for everyone, depending on what situation you're in. But they're still there and they still are frightening and, and they're, it's a threat and we all experience those ex moments of fight or flight. So I wanted to show that everybody wants to feel like they're not alone, but we can't help at times in life to think we are. And so maybe with the Queen of Cicadas, with Mestiza Blood, with everything and anything I write, it can shine a little light and say, but you're not alone and it's going to be okay. So that is also kind of a positive aspect to these stories that are quite dark, just to say, hey, you're not alone. So I'm a woman in horror and um, it's, I think when I first started, it was very intimidating because I didn't know anyone and you know, I looked at my Kindle, looked at my bookshelf and there were a lot of male writers. And I also thought of all the stories I had in my mind and what I wanted to write and I said, wait a minute, I have something to say. So I went for it and you know, I met so many amazing people in the indie horror community. There are so many absolutely talented women writers out there. And I think it's important to find your community, find your tribe, support other women in horror because it's easy to give up. It's easy to get discouraged. But we're all in this together and we all have stories to tell. And so you know, I've, I know I've said this before, you've got to be persistent. You have to persevere if you really believe in your storytelling because it is discouraging to always see um, male horror writers kind of getting the accolades, the attention, the, uh, you know, people who already have biases that are like, oh, women can't write horror. Really? Because I have a few stories <laughs> that say otherwise. I know, I've read stories from other women that say otherwise. Um, but again, that goes back to people and their perception of what a woman should be, how we should act, how we should look, how we should dress, um, you know, our sexuality, our gender. And I think there's this perception that, you know, being a woman does not jive with horror, but in fact, if you scratch below the surface, 
and you hear the stories that women have told with their personal experiences, that's real horror. Some women have experienced real horrors. So don't tell me that we can't write horror when we've lived it for years, centuries. So I say if you're a woman and you want to write horror or science fiction or anything, do it because we need your voice, we need your story. And I'm so grateful. I, I, I'm so glad I never gave up. So being a woman in horror, it's not always easy, but it sure as hell is rewarding. I'd like to tell everyone that has read my books, that has reviewed them, who shared it, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I greatly appreciate it. But I also want to say that if you have a story in you, if you have a dream, if you have a passion, it's okay to follow it. It's also okay to have a few failures. It's okay to uh, cry at rejection. It's okay to celebrate with great news. Um, it's also important to know that there will be very quiet times where nothing is happening and you'll question yourself. But that's still no reason to not believe in what you want or who you are or to doubt yourself. Because I think every little dream, every little idea comes from somewhere. So why not follow it? And it, there'll be ups and there'll be downs, but if you truly believe in it and you truly believe in yourself, then just keep going. You know, I started late in life. I started writing in my late 30s. And I didn't give up, even though I was very close so many times. And in fact, the Queen of Cicadas, I was about to give up. I was about to just not send it anywhere. And I decided, well, let me just try Flame Tree Press. And it just happened. And then everybody told me, collections don't sell. Nobody, nobody publishes collections. Collections aren't this, collections aren't that. But I believed in it and I wasn't gonna take no for an answer. And I sent it and then it's here. So there are two books, Mestiza Blood and The Queen of the Cicadas, that were works that had a lot of no's, that were unlikely, that were different, that might not have happened if I didn't persist and if I didn't believe in myself and if I didn't just spend hours crying and doubting, but then saying, no, come on, get up one more time, just go. And I know for a fact that even if it didn't work out, I would have still said, oh, come on one more time, but it did. It just took that one time. So I'd say to all my readers, it just takes one. It takes one email. It takes one last effort. And if you don't do it, you'll just wonder, well, what if? So would you rather take the risk? Or would you rather spend who knows how long wondering what if? So go for it, you know, today, tomorrow, but just do it. Because if I didn't follow it, we wouldn't have these two books. And I am so incredibly proud and grateful that they're out in the world. And again, thank you for picking them up. 